Hey guys, long time. This is just an update, kind of sort of an update video to let you know what is going on with the oil catch cans. I'm at a, I got me a shop. That's why I am not doing uh, videos as often as, as I used to. You know, five, maybe six of you that watch my videos may know that I used to work out of my garage. Now I got me a shop. There is three more bays over there. Anyways, you may know or not. Well, if you don't, this door is just, okay. I believe it was two years ago or so, I, I don't know, a while ago. I had an issue with the driver's side catch can, oil catch can. I have a setup of three, I'll show you in a minute. And after just one session, it would overfill with oil. Uh, the one attached to the left side, driver's side cylinder head. And well, I couldn't finish a, finish a 20 minute session because I didn't want to leave oil on the, on the racetrack, obviously, right? for obvious reasons. So I thought I went online and you can buy a, like a, a check valve thing from Cusco, I think they make it, it's like 300, 400 dollars or set up a different kind of a catch can, you know, like an IAG, stuff like that. My stuff vents into the atmosphere. Let me show you. So this is it. The reason I'm here is I'm just doing some, look, this is from flying rubber on the racetrack. As I parked this thing in, uh, was it October? Whenever the last Michigan, uh, not Autobahn, uh, Gingerman uh, racetrack is, I just came back home, parked it, and that was it. Still half a tank of E85 fuel, which is corrosive. I'm gonna actually just, I was gonna drain it and put a few gallons of 93 octane, but I'm just gonna fill it up with 93. I'm gonna do a half and half. That's gonna lower the E85, and that should be, you know, should fix the problem. It should be safe to sit for a few more months. It is the first of January 2024 today, actually, and it took me so much time to actually get to this car. the The tire pressure in this wheel was 18 psi. You can you can tell how the at the track it was maybe in its 30s, 32, 34. I don't remember. So you can now see eight. What is it? 18 psi difference between hot tire and now. Well, it is 30 out. Anyways, and uh, yeah, oil change obviously because E85. I was running it. I was actually got it up to my E85 content was maybe up to 70 percent according to my access port, uh, which is pretty high, pretty good, but it is corrosive if it sits in your oil. So an oil change after a race track, uh, track day, I should say, is important. So, you know, don't wait months like I did. So oil change, tire pressure, uh, you know, overall check, no major issues. I got an oil leak, very minor oil leak from this valve cover and a rear diff which I'm gonna have to address the rear diff I'm gonna leave alone the rear diff I'm gonna have to address come springtime so this is my setup black catch can driver side catch can well not anymore let me explain this used to be the driver side catch can this hose used to go right there and passenger oil catch can. Now this is the driver's side catch can and this is the passenger catch can. You can see this hose runs all the way down there to the passenger side and then this guy here runs down to the driver's side. Now in my head the idea was you know, before I would make a right turn 
and especially maybe even on braking, during braking, this would, the hose was just right, straight up to here, like a foot long hose, maybe not even, straight up to this catch can, obviously the same from here to there. This catch can is the same. I had to, had to change this a little bit to make it all, you know, function. So the idea behind this, in my head at the time, before I even did, did this, during a right turn, this oil that's connected, where's is, where is the hose? This one, this one here, you can't see it, but it's, it runs right over here. It will not get up to that, to that catch can because, well, I mean, you know, all this, the, the, the G-force goes this way, the hose runs, uh, goes that way, obviously, right? And the same thing for uh, this other catch can. Making a left turn, this will not go there. The G-force gravity is working against this hose. So there's no, no you know, way this is gonna fill up quick. But it did, but not quick. It took three sessions for this, for maybe, I would say, I collected this much oil. So that's one hour of, on the limit, driving that catch can, this much, the black, about the same, this, maybe this much, something maybe going on. Well, no, I was gonna think, because no, that's the, passenger side so some for some reason this catch can fills up quicker but it's much much slower so it worked this was essentially I don't know $15 don't get any hoses this has to be oil resistant hose okay all these hoses are oil resistant transmission hose is also okay actually this is I think a transmission uh, hose anyways don't get coolant hoses is what I'm saying that's it. Cheap way, if you have the same issue as, as I do, just flip the catch cans around. Problem solved. Instead of buying fancy three, four hundred dollar check valves. So this is it. Tires are in bad shape. Probably one more track day and they gotta go but I plan to do more autocross stuff this year I I think I only did one track day last year last season just didn't have the time all right back to hibernation see you oh one more thing I did change the axle back from a two and a half to a three inch. Be the reason because there was something rattling inside the tip on the two and a half. The two and a half went on the 06 Impreza, which some of you may know. And this guy is too close to the bumper and it melted it here. I'm probably just gonna trim this and maybe buy the cover. I, don't, I never liked those. I have to figure out somehow how to lower this another half inch or so. And, uh, you know, cut this off, basically. Check out this Forerunner 2000. Th in perfect condition. The frame is nearly spotless. Check that out. Inside, super clean. We are doing, just as a precaution, we are doing rod bearings in frame, rod bearings and main bearings. I had to pull the transmission. We're gonna replace the transmission to a better one. We're also doing timing. Oh yeah, this has a cylinder gasket issue. This has 306,000 miles, guys. Let me show you the bearings. Here's the rod bearing. Keep in mind, 306,000, maybe 308,000, I don't remember. Over 300,000. Check this out. This is, this is, I mean, this is the rod bearing. And this is the main bearing. You gotta give it to Toyota, seriously. You know, amazing. 
they, they, don't, <laughs> they could stay. They could have just stayed there. We didn't have to touch anything. But look at this, perfect. Obviously, you know, it's got a few leaks here and there. But, I mean, it is just... Well, it is a Texas or a California truck, used to be. Somehow we ended up here. If this, this, this looks like if it was in the Midwest, uh, where I am right now, obviously, it looks like it's been here for, it might have been here for two, three years. Maybe four. But this is a 22-year a car, 22-year-old car. Crazy. After this video, I'm going to put out a longer video at the actual Michigan Gingerman Track Day, which happened months ago. Better late than never. That's it. Ciao.